So when you look at all the stuff that is that has been going on around us, and I'll talk a little bit more about this tomorrow, um, it is very clear that we have basically three imperatives, uh, three things that as architects we must do. One is that the beauty, the uh, the power of design to empower end users, to make them um, more able to do their thing, uh, must be carried out. We must, if we are not building our product with the point of view to empower end users, um, we are missing the point. We are missing the point of the great transformation. If we are not keeping design thinking, the, the purpose, the intent, what it is that the end user is trying to accomplish. If we are not keeping this at the heart of what we do, then we are missing the whole point of this transformation. I think that is the first thing, is we must enable further empowerment and amplification of end users of all kinds so that they can do their own thing. As IT people, as architects, we have to do this. We at SAP have to do this. Um, so therefore, and when you come to TechEd, we look at us as a part of a bigger community. Um, we have thousands of customers and partners here. We are just one of these nodes in this big network. Um, we are the sponsors of this event and all of that, but it is not like a one bi-directional thing. It is a network. Um, and we are one of the nodes in the network, so if we look, if we reflect on ourselves, we are doing the same thing. We, are, we have brought a design community. Uh, we have made Sam Yen, many of you have seen Sam, the head of design and user experience for SAP. And um, he is bringing a singular focus on design to everything that we do. Um, as you know, our products historically have had a great reputation for, you know, simplicity and, and user friendliness. Um, <laughs> the, uh, so Sam is working on this, and he's going to talk about this a little bit tomorrow, about how we are bringing the power of design uh, to SAP and to everything that we do, to our traditional products, to the new things that we do, and how we can all work together, how you can contribute, and so on. So that is the first one, is the power of bringing the power of design to everything that we do. The second one is, if we have to do that, we must... Well, what do we do with the existing landscape? What happens to the existing infrastructure that we have invested in? Um, if you look at the curves, I was talking about the curves earlier. While all these things have been dropping non-linearly or exponentially, in fact, some things have been getting worse non-linearly and exponentially. And one of these things is the cost of, you know, tinkering with an existing landscape. Over the decades, as systems have been put into the landscape, there is an unbelievable amount of dependency that gets built. And if you now add something new into the landscape, the cost of introducing that thing into the landscape is now exponentially worse than it was 10, 15, 20 years ago. Four years ago, when I articulated timeless software, it used to look like, wow, that is an interesting idea. Now, already, if you look back on it, it sounds obvious. Because the cost of introducing disruption into a landscape grows exponentially with the number of components. You know, Bob Metcalf talked about this in Metcalf's Law, um, that it is a uh, n-squared relationship with the number of components in a, um, in a landscape. That, um, you know, the cost of introducing something into a landscape to disrupt a landscape is prohibitive. And therefore, new things must be introduced non-disruptively. This is how nature works, you know. This is how complex systems of every kind work. Las Vegas is constantly transforming itself. The hottest casinos are like this, this new thing called Aria or whatever. And uh, it's on the other side of the strip or something like that. And every time I come to Las Vegas, it is like going through a tunnel. You come out of the airplane and you are in a tunnel and then you get in the car and then the car brings you into the hotel and then you are inside this tunnel and then you get back in the car, get back to the airport and you are gone. And somewhere you know that you went to Las Vegas, but you actually don't know what was going on in Las Vegas. It is, you went through this tunnel and back. Um, but I hear about this, you know. Uh, this time I heard that there is a new one called... Uh, every time I come here, Abdul, I try to find out what is new in Las Vegas. And 
there is a new casino called Vedera or Vedra or something like this, uh, which is apparently the hottest new place, uh, which I will obviously not get to see, but uh, perhaps you all will find some time to go check it out. Um, so non-disruption, uh, systems thinking, thinking about introducing new concepts, new things into the landscape non-disruptively. This is something that has to be done. Um, in 2008, this was a new thing. Um, we introduced the gateway at that time on which the Duet product has been built and uh, many other products now. Now, of course, uh, the principle of non-disruption or timelessness is at the heart of everything that we do at SAP. Um, there is still an incredible complexity in the landscape, um, but we have been, uh, for the last, certainly for the last two and a half years that I have been responsible for products in technology and so forth, we have made this principle the heart of what we do. Um, and it is going beyond that, um, and not only uh, renewing everything that we do uh, from the perspective of um, non-disruption in adding more complexity into the landscape, but also renewing every single product that we have. So I think that as architects, we have to think about enabling the design and the empowerment of end users, but doing that while leveraging the existing investments, while leveraging the existing systems, and connecting new things, new concepts, new views, new notions into that non-disruptively. That has to be done. And we are doing that. Again, if we look ourselves, look into ourselves, as an example of this, we are doing that. We are renewing every single product non-disruptively, um, from applications to technology, from middleware to cloud to mobile, everything. All five markets that SAP operates in, every single product that we build, we are renewing that non-disruptively. But if you have to empower end users, and if you have to transform landscapes non-disruptively in order to empower the end users and to bring new experiences to them and to amplify their reach with technology, how do we do that? What is the mechanism? What makes it feasible for us to do that? And that leads to the platform question. And every technology, every uh, enabling technology, you look back centuries, always connects things, always connects people, connects endpoints. It always gets rid of layers of complexity. In every walk of life, you can see this. The fancy MBA word for this is disintermediation. Uh, it takes some time to figure out. There are so many uh, prefixes that dis and inter and mead. Um, but it basically means removal of layers. Removal of layers of complexity in between systems, in between us, in between things. And uh, every successful technology serves to remove layers of complexity. It serves to do things just in time. It serves to do things on the fly, as you need it. Um, just in time manufacturing, transform manufacturing 25 years ago. Um, you know, just in time construction of computers, change the business models. Now pretty much everything that we do is just in time. We take pictures, we process them as we need them. Um, but where is the just in time in software development? What is the platform for such a world? Our bet, of course, is on this little girl called Hana. Um, and Hana is at the heart of what we are doing. It is at the heart of what we believe is a real time, just in time platform. Um, and she has been growing in a way that is simply unbelievable. Um, we crossed 600 customers already. Um, and uh, the revenue, I mean, I'm not allowed to talk about Q3 because we are still in the quiet period. It just ended recently. But if you look at the end of Q2, we had already crossed $300 million in revenue, um, which is the, by, by far, by a wide, wide, wide margin, the fastest growing product in our history. As far as I can tell, also the fastest growing product in enterprise software history. Um, and why is that? What is, what is the reason for that? We always wonder, you know, now we have, I don't know, 19 or 20 customers in the 10,000 club, um, where something that they run 
is at least 10,000 times faster than something that they ran before. Uh, and, and you look at the big companies like Oracle and so forth, and they are all sort of waking up to this reality that, my goodness, there is something going on here. And the answer to that is, again, is very straightforward. Uh, and every time you see these companies make announcements about hardware-based improvements like, like uh, PCI Express cards that can make SSD look like memory and things like that, they miss the entire point of just-in-time calculation. The point is not that these companies are 10,000 times faster. The point is you are able to do the business activity that you need in the window of opportunity that you decide. 